Hey, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Whenever you're watching this video, uh, welcome to the show here. Welcome to uh, my channel, to Open Carry Texas. Wherever you're viewing this, if you're viewing it on StreamYard, hello. Um, let me get over here. So, all right. Uh, let me give you some background before we jump right into this. I, I asked uh, Not So Slim Jim to come on. So make sure that you go and subscribe. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm, I'm just saying it was last minute for me. So if I look like poopy, uh, that's oh, yeah. CJ's fault. So, <laughs> um, so I, I've asked Jim to come on. Jim has not seen, I don't think he's seen what I'm about to show everybody. Uh, and, and I really wanted someone else to talk about this. And one of the reasons that I gave out the, um, you know, the steam yard link instead of the other link is, you know, maybe, maybe we'll have some other people on that want to make a, a, a comment about this. So here's the background on Tuesday. I was in Austin all day long. I left the Capitol literally at three 59 in the morning. Um, I was there from eight o'clock that day until the, the previous day until no, three. So, 8 a.m. that day till 3 30 so the morning hours. the next day yeah yes 20 hours i was uh in austin fighting against gun control and fighting for uh gun rights although uh, the overwhelming majority of the bills that day were anti-gun bills um it was a big day for the left to uh try and and undermine our rights and so one of the bills was house bill uh, 2744. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bring this up for you guys because I kind of want you to see what the, oh, you know what? I probably need to hang on. I should probably share my screen if I'm going to do that. I wasn't anticipating that. Let's see. Share, present, share screen. Allow. All right. Uh, let me turn this off. So here is the bill. I'm gonna try and make this a little bit bigger, so we now, can all CJ, see it. You get your uh, your volume up, because I again? guess uh, I guess someone's saying we're echoing, which is why I got my headphones on so I don't get echo. Okay, is that better? Is that better with the echo? All right. Um, hopefully, that's better with the echo. I hear sound is great in the in the main chat. What's the private chat? That You're both go. echoing really bad. That might be that might be comments. yours because in the chat it says we're fine. Oh, I was looking at private. Okay. All right, sound is perfect. Good. Let's let's just keep going. All right. So here is the uh, here's the bill. It's a uh, House Bill twenty. Dang it! This is the wrong one. You slacker. I know. You think you think they could use a little prettier of text, other than the exact same one all the time that just makes your brain hurt. Yep. All right. Well, give I don't me, know what's give going me some italic here. bold already. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, lay the background here on this bill. So there we go. All right. Yeah. So, so this is the bill that was being uh, debated, uh, one of many. Uh, but this is the one that had, I think, a hundred and ninety. So they cut off registration for this bill at noon. At around 11 o'clock, um, they had approximately 189, is what I was told, uh, people signed up on this particular bill. And here's what it essentially does. is it And that's why I, uh, I testified online at like 9 o'clock in the morning yeah. for all the bills, because I hate Austin. Uh, intentionally or knowingly, if a person intentionally knowingly sells, rents, leases, gives, offers to sell, rent, lease, or give uh, to a person under the age of 21... A semi-automatic rifle that is capable of accepting a detachable magazine that's greater than 22 calibers. All right. So pretty much every, I mean, the, the, the vast majority of popular rifles have a magazine. Now, here's here's what's funny about this bill. Just a an M1 Garand is what a 30 out six, right? Make sure I'm I got my numbers right. An M1 the Garand is 30 out six. And it either takes, I can't remember if it's an eight or a 10 round fixed magazine. I think it's 10. I might be, it might be, it's eight. Okay. Thank you. So it's got an eight round magazine that uses a clip, not a magazine. So you use a clip to load the, the eight rounds into the magazine and it's a 30 out six round. I can give that round under this bill. If this were law, I could give that gun to a person 18 to 20, 
but I couldn't give an AR-15 with a bullet that's about three times smaller than a 30 out 6 to that same person because it's got a detachable magazine. Okay, two and a half times smaller. Anyway, that's that's the bill that we're debating here. This was a bill that was, uh, uh, apparently it was asked for by, oops, wrong one. Sorry. I don't care. You, you can make me small. I look less fat. It makes you look bigger. It's fine. It works out. Um, and so it, it uh, I guess I kind of like the Texas flag back there. And this was a big bill that uh, the representative King who represents the Uvalde area proposed after the Uvalde attack down there when the cowardly police officers allowed a kid, well, a, a young adult to murder 21 children. Okay. A mentally so, incompetent uh, person yes. who doesn't understand their gender properly. Right. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to address it in this video. But I've been doing some, I, I've been parsing and analyzing the video of just this bill. And I'm going to give you a teaser for something that's coming up. The House Select Committee on Community Safety openly, brazenly, and what they thought wouldn't get caught, violated the rights under the First Amendment and the 14th Amendment of the Constitution during this hearing. I'm not going to give anything away because I'm still collecting all my data, but in just the data that I have so far, it's absolutely clear that the committee was engaged in content discrimination, content-based discrimination. We all know that government is not allowed. They can create reasonable rules that deal with the First Amendment, but it must be content neutral. They cannot discriminate against you because you support a bill. They can't discriminate against you because you oppose a bill. They can't discriminate against or they can't discriminate in your favor if you support a bill and they can't discriminate again in your favor if you support or oppose a bill. It doesn't matter. However, I'm telling you right now, that's what happened during this bill hearing. And I'm going to have that in another video. But in this video, what I want you to do is I want you to watch this. This is an eight minute clip. Well, about nine minute clip. Um, and the no, reason that I'm going to add nine you, minute magazine, CJ, nine minute magazine. Okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I want to play this entire nine minutes because I don't want anyone to accuse me, you or this channel of selectively editing this conversation. OK, so what you're going to see is you're going to see NRA representative Tara Micha gets up to testify against twenty seven forty four. This is the exchange and it's going to blow your mind. Have you registered as Tara Micha, representing the National Rifle Association, testifying against the bill? Is that correct? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Please proceed. Um, Tara Micha, representative of NRA, opposed to House Bill 2744. Um, I'm a resident of Texas, for those of you that don't know. I don't parachute in from Washington, D.C. Um, Somebody very near and dear to me has been to um, the site of the mass shootings that were mentioned today. He's been to Sutherland Springs. He's been to El Paso. He's been to Midland, Odessa. He's been to Uvalde. Um, I saw how that impacted him upon returning from those scenes, and I can't imagine what everybody in the audience has gone through, and I'm very sorry for you. I can't imagine the pain that you are going through, um, as I mentioned, because I saw how it impacted somebody very close to me who went there. NRA is, we represent 18, 19, and 20 year olds who are not mass shooters. We defend the Constitution. Realistically, a raise the age bill is likely to be litigated and found unconstitutional. What are proposals that have been enacted or are being considered to address Uvalde? I mentioned earlier in my testimony on another bill, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act that was enacted last summer. It imposes a three to 10 day waiting period on all firearm purchases by anybody who's 18, 19, or 20. 
and there's a local law enforcement notification piece anytime somebody in that age group attempts to purchase a firearm that I also mentioned. There are bills that this committee has heard this session, um, House Bill 2454 on straw purchases of firearms, making those illegal on the state level. There are record reporting bills for juvenile disqualifying records, records that would make them ineligible or make them ineligible to possess a firearm, requiring those to be reported to DPS and to NICS. Those proposals would withstand constitutional scrutiny. And with that, I'll end my testimony. Thank you. Members, any testimony? All right, here it goes. Listen up. Chairman Moody. Your testimony is that this will likely be litigated. Oh, sorry, not um, this one. It's when Retta Bowers. Raise the age bills in other raise states, such as California and Florida. Uh, those are being litigated currently. Currently. So it would, it would join into that kind of broader legal conversation. But this could be, this is crafted in a different fashion, as different exceptions, narrowly tailored. Um, the, but there is no final word from any court on the constitutionality of a provision like this, is there? From the Supreme um, court? Not in the post Bruin era. So we and don't the, have that opinion yet? No, and the, cur the cases that are currently being litigated um, on the Florida and California laws were, those cases began pre Bruin. Okay. Um, so is it not the purview of the legislature to pass laws. And that's that's what a legislature does. Yeah, and, I'm, and things are litigated all the time. All the time. In fact, sometimes we pass laws for the very purpose of instigating litigation to figure out what the boundaries of constitutionality are. You would agree with me with that? Yes. So there's nothing that prevents us from joining that conversation in the legal world about where the boundaries are when it comes to the Second Amendment. What, what is it that you would have against us joining that conversation? Just because you think it's ultimately going to be overturned? Because we, part of our role as an association is to defend the right of law-abiding 18, 19, and 20-year-olds to purchase and own firearms. Look, I, I think it is. I think it is something that, at least in my time here, we've done time and time again, is pass laws for the very reason of figuring out where the boundaries are. And I tell you, what's worth it to see where the boundaries are, so that we can keep people safe and community safe, uh, community safe going forward. You mentioned the bipartisan Safer Communities Safer Communities Act as a solution to these issues. What was the NRA's position on that bill? No, but I, what I mentioned was that that was something that would withstand constitutional What was the NRA's scrutiny. position on that bill? We did not support that bill. Yeah. NRA won't support bipartisan gun safety bill. Mm -hmm. Falls short at every level. That's, that's the comment from the NRA about the, the thing that you just said is something that we should all be thinking about. So you're against that too. Well, regardless, regardless of our position on it, it, it is the law right now. And as I said, I was pro I was outlining legislation that has been passed or considered that would withstand constitutional scrutiny. But you left out that piece. It's the law. You left out the piece <laughs> about where you all stand on that. I, there, I just, were di there were different parts of that bill that we um, opposed. That was a provision that we opposed, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, here we go. Listen up. Um, Ms. Mecha, um, thank you for coming to your state capitol, and we really appreciate you coming to every uh, committee hearing that you come and attend and you, you testify against uh, certain bills. But are you aware that you can provide written testimony? Yes, ma'am. 
And then with all due respect to the families of the victims in here, could you not have submitted written <coughs> testimony of your against and opposition to this bill? I could have. With submitted. all due respect. Thank you, ma'am. Um, with all due respect, I, I do have a right to give. I Oral thanked testimony. you already. I thanked you already for coming and for uh, submitting your your testimony in person. But these people in here have lost family members and are still grieving, are shy of a year from the time their loved ones have left this earth, and you took the time to come in here and sit in front of us and talk to us about a bill you don't, your organization didn't even support and didn't have the decency to just submit your opposition in writing. What, what is that? What, what is that? I mean, I know you have a job to do. With, with all due respect. Not, could you not have respected them? With all due respect, ma'am, I believe we would have been criticized for not showing up. Who cares? And I'm sorry to say it like that, but who cares what criticism you would have received when these people have lost their loved ones? I don't understand. Members, any other questions? Thank you. Jim, did you just hear what I heard? Yeah, basically she was saying, how dare you? How dare you come in front of me and tell me that you don't like this bill because you might hurt other people's feelings. You should have done it online. Only people who are pro-anti-gun shall come up and speak positively on this bill. No one, no one shall speak negatively. You shall be ashamed of yourself. Shame, shame on you. You are a horrible person. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, go F yourself, lady. That That is absolutely 100% chilling someone's constitutional right to be able to go up and 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 speak their mind or you know redress your government it's a 14th amendment violation they they she absolutely as a representative and don't me wrong i don't really like the nra i think they're a bunch of fuds but you know every now and then uh, they do try to do some good and she's a representative of hundreds and thousands if not millions of americans that don't want gun control and she's trying to say oh well there's you know some families over here, you know, they, they lost some kids and some of them are for this bill. So how dare you do this? And that, that is, that's bull crap. That, that representative or Senator, what the hell, it was a house bill. So that representative should be sanctioned. She should, she should go in front of her peers, just like in Tennessee, and they should scold her for exactly what she just did. It is not her job to tell the constituents of the state of Texas what they can or cannot support. That is an absolute violation of her oath of office. And I want to I want to bring back this bill here. This is the bill that we're talking about. Okay, and before I get into all the other stuff, you had this is HB twenty seven forty four. All right. Now I'm going to watch, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do a control find here and I'm going to type in the word Uvalde. Oh, there. Okay. That's King of Uvalde. That's because there are more than one representative King. So they identify them by what their district is, but let's see uh, where else Uvalde or Uvalde families are mentioned in this bill. Uh, come on. Next one. Next one. If you look right here, one, in other words, it's not anywhere in the text of the bill. Nowhere in the text of this bill does it say that this is about Uvalde. What this bill says is that it will be a crime to provide any firearm, which this is already the law right here. This part right here 
is essentially already the law. The only thing they're changing is they're taking out the word any to say to a child younger than 18 years of age, a club restricted, uh, a location restricted knife or a firearm other than, and then it goes to B. And then it says, not only can you not give guns to a child, but if they're an 18 to 20 year old adult, you can't give them to, you can't give them a rifle with a detachable magazine if it uses a caliber greater than a 22 long Colt or WMV or whatever, a, a 22 caliber round. Nowhere else in this bill, I mean, it, this is just talks, there, there is an exception for the police, there's an exception for military, and there's an exception if you've been honorably discharged and you're 18 to 20. Okay, so those exceptions exist. But nowhere in this bill does it mention that this is an Uvalde bill. Other than the Uvalde representative, Representative King, a Republican, by the way, I want everybody to know this is a Republican that is pushing this bill. But and so other than the fact that the Republican is from Uvalde, nothing in this text will only apply to people in Uvalde. Therefore, sorry about that. That's the train in the background of my office. No, I just and, said you had a really weird sounding fart. <laughs> it literally the train is probably a hundred meters away, less than that. Um, so you've got a representative who comes in there and excoriates a representative of the NRA who represents, I don't know how many Texans are NRA members. And I'm like you, I, you know, even though I'm already an endowed life member or Patreon life member, um, they'll never get another penny from me. But I know Tara personally. I, I work with her all the time that I'm down at the Capitol. I see her. We testify on or against the same bills. She is a, a, she is a great person. She did not deserve what just happened to her. That was nothing more than them trying to... And, and here's why they did it, Jim. What you could not see in that video is and you know i should probably uh I, I i should probably while we're talking send this video to myself so that i can play it for you um oh i, I know exactly what was happening i i know that the, uh that mom's demand action in every town for gun sense these you know multi then people say million but no if you put them together they're billion plus companies that are funded by Soros, that are funded by the Democratic National Party, they're uh, funded by uh, the, what is it, AdBlue, or that whatever, the the, the super PAC that is, uh, you know, getting uh, donations from people who never given them donations of, you know, a thousand times over the course of a year, and they have no clue that it happened, and all these, all these millionaire anti-gunners, and they're hiring hordes of people to go out there if they're little red and blue shirts, and to absolutely take over um, Republican and pro-gun states and to go in there and just mask the, the same thing. They give them a script. Here's what you want to say. Guns are bad. Shooting's bad. Dead kids are bad. I'm against this bill. You know, when they bust them in, pay them, pay for their lunch, pay for their hotel, they do all that stuff. And, and all they're trying to do is, you know, just absolutely do like uh, takeovers uh, of uh, of sessions takeovers of committee hearings to make it seem like the absolute mass majority of people are for um the these anti-gun bills and and they think that they're going to get away with it but you know and that that's exactly why people like you need to go to the capitol and i would say stand up they couldn't see in the background but you know get up there and use your voice <laughs> and, and and email mass emails out to them telling them no we, we don't want this crap and, and, and in the background there, so they were doing a documentary at, at the Capitol while all of this was going on. And so there were cameras oh. everywhere. The entire back of the room was filled with a camera. As a matter of fact, let me bring this, let me see if I can bring this back up without. So let me stop that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, he's doing that. I don't know if everyone's seen it lately, but uh, Netflix they got the uh, the AOC documentary. They got the um, uh, what was the former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi documentary, where they selectively edit and make them look like they're these constitutional saving awesome people that are here to make America better. And that's probably the same thing they're doing here. And I don't know if it's for Moms Demand Action or who it's for, but this is another. And I'm not going to call it a documentary. I'm going to call it propaganda. 
It's a propaganda film that they're putting together to make it look like they're good. And this representative is like, oh, I need to I need to make my way into that. And I need to look like I'm a hero. I'm a hero for stopping uh, little children from being killed by these big bad assault rifles. And that's that's exactly what she was doing. She was doing her performance for the propaganda film. This is a short uh, ten se- or nine second video I took uh, from the back of the committee hearing room. Th- th- this is what you're looking at. There's a there's a camera up front on all the witnesses, and then on the back, it's just nonsense. I oh I, wow I don't rem- I don't remember I don't... the last time yeah. I've seen that many cameras in a hearing room on gun bills. I've seen one or two and then like a bunch of people, like regular people with like regular HDMI or not HDMI, um, DSL cameras and stuff like that. I've never seen that before. It was crazy. And so you've got, so Representative Bowers gets up there and she excoriates uh, Miss Micha and tells her with all due respect to the families, with all due respect to the family. Okay. I'm sorry. But I don't see anywhere in this bill that this is an Uvalde family bill. I don't see anywhere in this bill that the only people this is going to affect are the Uvalde families. This bill and is going to affect every single Texan. And, and, and for any every of our, Texan. Any of our Yan- any of our Yankee uh people watching up in the north in the south, when you say with all due respect, that means um go F yourself. And by the way, yeah. So yeah, shut that, up. that's like, that's like, bless your heart. Bless your heart's basically, um, yeah, screw you. And, and we've got this, you know, you couldn't submit written testimony, you know, for, for these families, you know what? Look, let me tell you something. When you go to Austin to testify on a bill, it doesn't matter what that bill is. There's a lot of emotional bills in there. There's emotional bills about abortion and murdering children in the womb. There's emotional, uh, things about sexual assault, but to sit there for representative Bowers to sit there and tell her, you know what? These families, they're hurting. Now I don't see anywhere in this bill where it says because of what happened in Ovaldi, we're presenting this bill. Okay. We didn't know they were going to make this a circus and, and those families they're hurting. Okay. I'm not going to take that away from them. What happened to their kids is a tragedy. And, and when I got up there and I spoke, I made very clear, you know, one of the first things I said was, Every single person testifying on this bill, for this bill, or against this bill, every single one of them cares about those families that in Uvalde. Every single one of them, for, against, or on that bill, care about the fact that 21 kids were murdered. And many more are going to face what I would argue is probably worse. They have to live with the sight of those murdered children that got murdered right next to them, or, or if they got shot and they survived and they've got their friends blood on them. Well, and a you lot know, of the, people are affected by this. The, the thing but I that hate doesn't about, mean we don't have a voice. The thing I hate about the left is they automatically assume anyone. And I'm going to use the phrase victim of gun violence. You know, and they're using the family. So I call them like secondary victims are automatically anti-gun. Now, my dad, he was murdered when I was a kid because he got shot in the back of the head with a robbery. I have been shot myself. You know, I, I've been robbed at gunpoint uh, more than one time. So you could put me into that victim. I don't call myself victim, whatever. It's, it's life. It happens. The victim of gun violence. But I'm absolutely pro, pro Second Amendment. You know, it's like if, I mean, you look overseas, people want to rob someone. They can't get a gun. They'll do it with a knife. They'll do it with whatever they have available to them. It, it, it's how it goes, you know, and the, I understand the best way that I can protect myself, my family, my community is, is with a firearm because bad guy's going to have a firearm. Regardless, I need to be able to have something to be able to at least match what type of uh, force that they have to be able to counter that force. But these leftists, they just don't understand. They figured, oh, well, you know, we just make it so they make it illegal. You think these criminals give a crap? about whether or not it's legal, they're still going to get the same same damn guns. They're like, oh, well, I can't get a rifle in Beyond 22. They don't care. They're still going to do it. And all they're trying to do is make it so legal Americans can't go, or Texans in this case, can't go out and buy it. And the dumbest part, if you really want to look at it, all right, well, go get yourself a 22 AR-15. 
you know, go get yourself something that doesn't fit into that category and they'll still get their hands on something and still commit the same damn crime. Or they'll use a pistol, which is still used in over 90% of crimes in America. But, you know, whatever. We don't care about logic. We don't care about facts. It, it, it's, it's just infuriating to me um, that we've, we've got a, a representative telling someone you didn't have the decency not to come here and testify in favor of a bill that we've got the media here. We are trying to push an agenda, damn it. We are trying to push an agenda and you're getting in the way of that agenda and you didn't have the decency to not make, make sure that your voice was not heard here. You know, we're, we're trying to show that everybody supports communism. And here you oh, she- come, Ms. Lucha, and, 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 and you tell a, a completely different story that completely... Di- Look at all these cameras. Now we've got to edit out your footage, damn it. Because oh, no. you submit your written testimony. She loved that she was there. She loved it because I guess what? They're going to they're gonna edit out that part where she told her to, uh, to submit her testimony online. And they're just going to leave in the part where, she, oh, think about the families and this, this, and that. They're going to yeah. cut it down to nice little sizable things, and they're going to split it up, and they're going to make her look like the damn hero of the left. That's exactly what's going to happen. And she she knew this was going to happen. She planned for it. She had that all written out and pretty on a nice little piece of paper, like, mm, I can't wait for her to say something so I can get her. I'm going to look so good on the new Netflix series, and I'm going to get so many campaign donations. It's going to be great. That's exactly what's going to happen. I, I, I want to play this part one more time. Um, it, it, it just infuriates me. And uh, I know some people have joined recently. I want you to know what we're talking about here. But the fact of the matter is that you can still grieve and you can still believe that what happened there was a a tragedy. You can still want to solve the problem and believe that there are other solutions or believe that 2744 is not the solution. But then you've got Representative Retta Bowers saying bullshit like this. Thank you for coming to your state capitol. And we really appreciate you coming to every uh, committee hearing that you come and attend. We appreciate you coming. But just not today. I mean, we got all these cameras here. Yeah, we have, oh, hang on. Let me unmute you. I don't know why you're muted. Did you mute yourself? There you go. I muted myself so everyone can hear it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I we we appreciate you coming normally. Okay, normally, but uh, obviously you didn't get our memo um, that we're trying to push an agenda here today. Uh, so uh, what I'm about to do is I'm about to tell you that you don't have the same rights unless you have a murdered child. Okay, and and even if you have a murdered child, you really don't have the same rights if you're going to oppose this bill because we expect everyone to walk the line. Are you aware that you can provide written testimony? Yes, ma'am. And then with all due respect. With all due respect, I'm about to uh, completely disrespect you. With all due respect, I'm about to completely tell you in a disrespectful way that your rights don't matter. With all due respect... In, in, my best, respect you. in my best Ricky Bobby voice. Now, with all due respect. Yeah. <laughs> victim in here, could you not have submitted the written testimony of your against an opposition to this bill? I could with have all due respect. And, and she keeps having to say that with all due respect. With all due respect. Thank you, ma'am. Um, now, keep it, keep it, parse those words out. With all do respect. You know what that means is I don't respect you. You know, I with all due respect, but there isn't any due to you because you represent the NRA. With all due respect, I, I do have a right to give. I thanked testimony. you already. I thanked you already for coming and for uh submitting your your testimony in person, but these people in here have lost this is family serious. members. And are still grieving, are shy of a year. Now, 
I want to purse this out also. These families are still grieving. It's not even been a year, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to parade them in here into a very emotional hearing. We're going to present a bill that we know there's going to be a lot of opposition for. There's going to be a lot of emotion. And, you know, so let's bring all these grieving families while they're still grieving and, and make them go through this again while I guess everything is still fresh. So yeah, they, they completely destroy their own narrative. It's okay for you. But hey, CJ, I, I actually have to get going. I got to go take care of my friend Gene. I'm going to let you take over for here, and I'll talk to you later. All right, brother. Hey, I just wanted to bring you on so you can see that, and I wanted to get another perspective on that. So I'll okay. I'll do it so low. Bye, everyone. See you. Thanks, Jim. All right. Uh, let me let me finish this up here, and then um, – and for those of you that are a little bit late, if you're only looking for the for the for the full video without edits or without any commentary, earlier in this video, um, I played the entire nine minutes without interruption. Okay, if you want to listen to it without commentary, so don't get mad at me now because I'm stopping and starting it. Um, you were late, uh, so but you can go back and listen to the whole thing without commentary. But now I want to kind of break this down. And their loved ones have left this earth, and you took the time to come in here and sit in front of us to talk to us about a bill you don't your organization didn't even support and didn't whose fault is that whose fault is that we all know the, the look the moms demand action in the bedroom ladies they paraded these families into this hearing now i'm not saying that they wouldn't have been here possibly anyway but they bust these families in here they put them up for the night they and then they, they in the hearing room, try to reserve seating as if their tragedies are any less or any more important than other people's tragedies, as if they're the only ones that should be in there. No other opinions matter. The only people that brought those families in front of or behind Tara and forced Tara, the NRA rep, to, to do this is the Democrats. The Democrats are using these families to push their agenda and anyone that stands in front of it, they're going to embarrass you. They're going to criticize you. They're going to try and tell you, you have no right to be here. They're going to try to shut you up. This is what communist regimes do. And we've got communists right here sitting up there. And then you've got Moody earlier. Moody says we pass law. I mean, he says essentially, you know, we pass laws just to see how much we're going to be able to violate the Constitution. Sometimes we pass laws just to push the envelope. He admits that the only they pass laws hoping that the citizens can't afford to fight their communist agendas. You have the decency to just submit your opposition in writing. There is nothing indecent about showing up and standing up for what you believe in. Every single person in the, and Tara herself, the reason Tara is sitting right there in that seat is because she gives a damn about those kids that were murdered. And she wants real, real action taken to put a stop to it. 2744, HB 2744 is not that real, real action. Okay. She believes, I guarantee you, now she's not as personally involved because she didn't personally lose a child but she is just as adamant just as pissed off just as emotional about what happened to those kids as those families are the only thing that is different is that she lacks the personal connection the familial connection to those murdered children you notice she doesn't sit here talking about the fact that this 18 year old murdered 21 kid well why why did this 20 why did this however old he was 18 19 years old why did he go in? Why did he choose a school? If he's going to murder a bunch of people, why did he even choose a school? Why not go to the mall? Why not go to a hearing during the legislative session where there's tons of people to shoot? Why not go to a Walmart? Why not go to a parade? Why not go to a myriad of places? The DMV. Why did that guy decide, I'm going to go and murder children? Young children, many of whom haven't even hit their 10th birthday. I'm going to murder those. Those are the people I'm going to. Why do you think he did that? Do you think he did that because he was pissed off that uh, he wasn't able to buy a gun? 
that he had to, for seven months, I think the testimony was, he was trying to get access to guns for seven months before he got these guns and murdered these children. But not a single fuckhead on that committee is asking a question about why did he choose a school to murder those children? Not a single one of these zealot Democrat socialist communists really care about the problem. What they care about is the fact that the NRA rep is sitting up there and daring to simply oppose their bill. That the, the visual that they're trying to create, which is grieving families and moms that care, is being ruined because this mom, Miss Micha, Tara Micha, because this mom decided she's not going to go along with this communist agenda and she sees this gun bill for what it is. It's a gun grab. It's treating 18 to 20 year old adults as if they're not adults. What magically changes between the age of 20 and 21 that suddenly it's okay that you didn't hear anything about that. You didn't hear any questions from the, uh, the Democrats or the Republicans here because we got a bunch of spineless cowards sitting on this committee. You didn't hear them asking obvious questions. Well, wait a minute. If we're trying to uh, stop the murder of children by mass shooters, what change? Why is this bill only up to 20? I mean, we've got mass shooters who are 27, 39. The Las Vegas shooter was 60, I believe. Why not prevent the transfer of guns to 60-year-olds? 38-year-olds. They're not asking those obvious questions because they want to push this agenda. This is about first trying to find out how can we violate your rights? And they're doing it in two ways. The first is they stigmatize the firearm, the AR-15 or whatever it is, or in this case, something that just takes a magazine, any gun that takes a magazine. Now, that's the first thing. Let's vilify the gun itself. Then, after they vilify the gun itself, okay, well, you know, we can, we can attack this. And, and if they're successful, they'll move on to other guns, of course. Never mind the fact that between 2 and 12%, depending on what uh, study you look at, of mass shootings or, uh, or with, or of shootings, excuse me, of, of uh, gun violence is with a rifle. Never mind that more people are killed with knives than with rifles. Never mind that more people are killed with fists and feet than with rifles. Never mind that more people are killed with blunt force objects than with rifles. That's not the point. We need to vilify the rifle. Now, what we need to do is vilify and start cutting people down by age groups. Okay, now we've got to say 18 to 20 year olds, you're you're not respond. You we're gonna send you to war to die. We're gonna send you to places where uh you're gonna put your life on the line because we need to protect oil or we need to protect the Biden crime family. But when you come home much like the British and the Australian soldiers I served with, you have no rights, okay? You're back to second-class citizen status. And then once they take out the 18 to 20-year-olds, then they're going to move on to the 21 to 25-year-olds. Then they're going to move on to everybody. But she thinks that it's indecent to stand up for what you believe in, unless you stand up for what I believe in. That's Bauer's, that's Bauer's position. It is indecent for you to stand up here and oppose our communist agenda. What is that? What what is that? I mean, I know you have a job to do. With, with all due could respect, you not, could you not have respected them? You know what? If you want to respect those families, they had a right and the ability. When Tara Micha got got up there and sat down in that seat, there's not a person in that room when she said, "My name is Tara Micha. I represent the National Rifle Association." There is not a person in that room. That was prevented from walking out if they didn't want to be disrespected. If she truly cared, if Representative Bowers truly cared, if Representative Guillen or Chair Guillen truly cared, he would have said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the NRA is about to speak. You might want to leave if you don't want to be disrespected. So obviously, this was all planned. This was all planned. This was the way it is. Uh... They did this for the cameras. I mean, look at the cameraman. Look at look at the cameraman. He's making sure, ooh, you know what? I need to get a tight shot. I guarantee you when this video comes out right here, this camera 
focused on this face is going to be a central figure in that documentary. Because that's the whole point of this. The whole point of this is to push an agenda to use emotions to undermine liberty and rights. Millions and millions of 18 to 20 year olds have access to firearms or, or have firearms themselves and aren't going into schools and murdering two dozen people, children. With all due respect, ma'am, I believe we would have been criticized for not showing up. Who cares? And I'm sorry to say it like that, but who cares what criticism you would have received? Exactly. And you know what I would have said? Exactly. Which is why I don't care about your criticism right now. Oh. When these people have lost their loved ones. How do they know? These people in the audience here, these, these, these oligarchs up here on this raised pedestal that they've created for themselves. How do they know there aren't families either watching this video at this hearing who registered either for or against the bill, likely against the bill that they didn't have murdered children. Who's murder? I mean, do only some people's murdered children matter? Is that the way this is? And look, I don't understand. What are you supposed to say to that? You, 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 you hear the complete silence. I think Tara at this, at this point realized, you know what? I'm not going to play their game. I am not going to be a pawn to these communist. I really want to use bad words to these communist authoritarians. I'll put it that way. I think she finally realized it doesn't matter what I say. She's trying to get something else for the camera. She's trying to get more sound bites for the camera. And I think she finally realized, which is why she, there's so much silence that it doesn't matter what I say. I can be 100% right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's not the agenda they're pushing. That's not the emotional argument they're trying to make right now. The emotional argument they're trying to make is that responsible gun owners um, have no place being in this hearing and opposing this bill. Thank you. No, go fuck yourself. Guys, the uh, representative's name is Retta Bowers. Um, I'm not going to share anything. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you or even suggest anything. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now. After that hearing, after her testimony, I went out there and I was very loud to the point where I made sure that the committee heard me as I walked out the door, that what I had just witnessed is absolute bullshit and out of line. Representative Bowers owes the NRA, NRA members, and Tara Meacha specifically an apology. Tara wanted me to not say anything that day because I hadn't spoken yet and i told tara this is bullshit i'm gonna call her out i am gonna call her out on what she did to you and because tara's the better person she asked me not to and out of respect for her at the committee i didn't mention it because i respect tara and i and i understand that that was a look that was just a bullshit move what representative bowers did to the nra rep tara Micha. It was unconstitutional to suggest that because an organization opposes a bill that they don't have the same right to sit there and be there without being criticized, bullied, undermined, shamed, or in any other way criticized for their position on a bill. And you know what? Shame on every fucking Republican that sat there on that committee and didn't object to what Representative Bowers was doing. Every single Republican kept their mouths shut. If I'd have opened my mouth from the back like I wanted to, I'd have been kicked out. But those representatives had the duty to stand up for Miss Meech's rights. 
and not a single Republican on that committee had the spine. The bill author didn't have the spine to stand up for Tara Meech's right to be there. The committee chair, supposedly a Republican, Chair Guillen, who used to be a Democrat, didn't have the, uh, the, the spine or the honor or the integrity to wrap his gavel and call Miss Bowers out for being out of line and let her know. Can you imagine if a Republican had said, you know, this, this bill is not going to fix anything. And um, how dare you come here and make this an emotional issue, you know, so that we, so that we have to feel bad to vote against this bill. Can you imagine? But we've got a committee full of spineless cowards sitting up there, keeping their mouths shut while a state employee an elected official is telling a citizen of this state that she has no right to appear in person on behalf of tens or hundreds of thousands of NRA members in Texas or millions. I don't know how many there are that you have no right to be here in person and testify on this bill. Not a single Republican or Democrat had the nerve to call her out on that. I'm calling her out right now. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, so I guess it doesn't matter. But it's wrong. It's unconstitutional. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the tip of the iceberg. The research that I'm doing right now and the video that I am putting together right now about how this committee acted on Tuesday, this unconstitutional act by this one individual and the lazy, cowardly, silence from everyone else you think i'm pissed now wait till you see what i've got coming this week when i get this video put together about how unlawful this committee carried itself on tuesday and anyone in the committee that's watching this you might want to go back and watch the video of that hearing and and uh your butt cheeks better start puckering because you screwed up not only did you screw up when you attacked Tara Micha, that was the uh, that was the impetus for me looking into this a little bit more. Laws were violated, the Constitution was violated, and to a, a you know not that it matters, the rules of the House were violated, and the rules of the committee were violated. Yesterday, I'm sorry, Tuesday. It's the House Select Committee on Community Safety. The House Select Committee on Community Safety. It's the, uh, I think if you look it up, it's uh, Community Safety, comma, Select in the House. I'm sorry to get everybody wound up. I'm wound up. I've been thinking about this for two days. How am I going to address this? How am I going to address this? Because the Constitution means something. And everyone, look, I don't support, I'm not an NRA fr friend of the NRA anymore. I don't like the NRA anymore as an organization, but I have nothing but respect for Tara and what she does and the kinds of slings and arrows that she takes when she sits, when she sits up there, you know, the number of people that attack the NRA, you know, attack the NRA all you want. I don't care. I, I, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not here defending the NRA. I'm defending what happened to a citizen of this state who represents members of other citizens of this state who are members of the NRA. And I, I would feel the same way if a Republican was treating moms demand action this way. I'd be just as pissed off because those ladies have a right to be there and speak their minds. And those men have a right to be there. I want to show you one more thing here because this is, this is important. If this is your rep, let me bring this over here. Oh, where'd it go? There we go. If any of these people is your rep,
this is this is everyone. Uh, let me move my uh, my let me move my face here. There we go. If this is your rep, one of these people, doesn't matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat, you might want to ask them why they didn't say anything or defend Miss Micha. Why were the Republicans silent? And there's some good Republicans on here. Look, I love Mark Durazio. He is a, a kick-ass representative. I love Ellen Troxclair. He's a kick-ass, re- she's a kick-ass representative. And there are others on here too. But uh, I think you you deserve answers. Why did no one on this list, Republican or Democrat, stand up for a citizen of the state who was being attacked for exercising her right and her duty to speak out on bills that are being pushed in this legislature? Now, this is a moral issue. Obviously, I think there's some constitutional violations there. Um, But she was allowed to speak. I mean, she was criticized for it, but she was allowed to speak. This is a moral issue. What happened, what I've shown you the past 56 minutes. But what I'm going to show you later is a legal issue and a constitutional issue. This is a moral and a constitutional issue. But if this is your representative... You need to ask why no one, no one stood up against Representative Bowers when she was so out of, how did, what what did words she used? How dare her not have the decency to treat Miss Misha with respect and just allow her to give her testimony. All Miss Bowers had to do was shut her cake hole. Let Tara have her two minutes, get up and leave. She didn't have to say a fucking word. But instead, she did. And why didn't any of these people also say something? Not during this despicable exchange and not after this despicable exchange. Now, I don't know what happened in the background. I don't know if uh, you know any representatives went up to Miss Bowers and said that was uncalled for, that was out of line, and uh, I demand that you go back there and retract everything and apologize. The only way I'm going to know that is if you call them and ask them. None of these people are my rep, so I can't call and I mean I can can call and and demand answers. But it's much better if one of these people is your representative, if you call them and you demand answers and ask them, what are you going to do about this to make sure, one, that Miss Micha's, that Miss Micha is defended and two, that it never happens again. All right, guys. Um, there we go. I appreciate your time. Uh, I, I, uh, I've got a minute and a half left. I'm going to, let me go to my chat here real quick. I'm going to ask the, I'm not going to say the name. Uh, there is one person that's on my, uh, stream yard since I have a minute and a half left. I'm not going to say your name because, but would you like, if you're doing the private chat, let me know, would you like to come on and say something about what you've witnessed this past hour? Yes or no. If no, I'm going to end this video. If yes, I'll bring you on for a brief second, give you a minute or two. All right. He said, yes, um, I shared the uh, the StreamYard link because I wanted to get other people's reactions to this. Uh, so I'm going to bring on Chappie here. And what what are your comments? I'm, I'm the same way as your other guests earlier. It's just down. It's, it, this is downright insulting the way our representatives are starting to treat each and every one of us. Uh I would have really loved Rachel Malone to have been there with the gun rights of America because I promise you she would have said something and shut that represented or she would have shut Rita Bowers down in that context had she been there. That young lady should never have been disrespected that way. If I go to the Capitol and I've been to the Capitol, you know that crowd. You know that, CJ. It's been a while. 
It's been a while, but there's nobody going to shut me down and tell me I have no right to be there and no right to tell whether I'm for or against a bill and submit what I think is right. That's, it, it's getting out of hand. These Republicans you're talking about, they're not Republicans. These are rhinos. These are Republicans in name only. You already said a couple of them were Democrats before. I've got a whole county down here full of politicians that are Republicans now, but eight years ago, they were Democrats. They still carry that same Democrat mentality. You know yeah. how I get, you know, you know how I get CJ. Brother, it's good to see you again. Good talking to you. Hey, it's been a while. You too, Chappie. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your comments. I'm going to, all right. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, I, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Say it again. What was the representative at the first that was uh, talking about it was his job to push the envelope on the Constitution? Oh, that was uh, Chairman Joe Moody. Joe Moody. That's what I was. Okay. Appreciate it, brother. Yep. All right. All right, guys. Uh, thank you again. Um, please share this video. Please share this video. Include the time hacks. I Like I said, there is a, a, a nine minute stretch where I didn't say a word. I didn't stop the video. I let it go the entire nine minutes on it. You know, if you want to pull that out and make your own damn video with just that nine minute section, you have permission. Do it. Share this video. Mirror this video. I don't care. That was wrong. And by the way, like and subscribe and click that notification bell because I'm telling you what you saw today is 10% of the problem and the outrage that you're going to have when you find out what's coming, what, what I've also uncovered. Um, there you go. You guys take care, be safe, uh, be free. And I'm, I think I need to go get some decaf. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. And stay safe. There's some bad storms coming.